few weeks ago, I did a video on my five favorite parks on the air antennas, what I'm using for portable operations. And I got has a, done a video on his favorite co-host. No, well, what do you mean? We sit, geez, Louise. You're, oh, oh, were you going to say Dave? Were you going to say Dave? <laughs> Dave's not here. <laughs> Dave's not here, man. Dave's not here. I'm <laughs> sorry, Dave. I just can't do that. Can't do that. <laughs> I think but, that's two um, 2001 references I've made tonight. I haven't done that in one, in, in one night. Man, that's that's crazy. Um, yeah, so it's, I, I, I looked at, I, I looked at all of my activations in the last year and I found that I'm using primarily five different antennas and the, the quarter wave vertical, uh, the Poder Performa KJ6 ERs performer antenna, the Ribikov, the NFET half wave and the ham stick. Those were the mm -hmm. five major antennas I've used in the last year. So I was thinking, well, what does everybody else use? And th this video, you know, generated a good amount of traffic. I had a lot of people comment on what their favorites were. So I, I took all of their, I took everybody's favorites and I tabulated them. And, uh, you know, the funny also um, confirmed the, the results. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's an audited, I got an audited list here. So okay. we're going to go with the top five. Viewer favorite this portable antennas. Yeah. <laughs> extremely, extremely scientific. And, <laughs> and um, you know, the funny thing is, is that my five favorites were are also the community's five favorite antennas because the the order was a little bit different, but still, um, the top. Of, of all the comments I received on this video, the top in the in top antenna with fifth with sixteen comments was the unfed half wave. So, and then and then well, tied for. I think the unfed half wave is everyone's making them nowadays. Oh yeah, and, and you get so many bands out of them. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But I but I would also say that probably out of all of them, that's probably the hardest one to set up. Yeah. Well, with dipole, it'd probably be a little bit more difficult. Yeah, but out of the five that you had mentioned. Oh, the five that I mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's it's the one that's gonna. It, that's the one that does take the most effort to set up, mm -hmm. because you need a support and an anchor point and and something. You know, right. um, the space. You know, for sixty some feet for a forty mm -hmm. meter and fit half wave, mm -hmm. but you get four bands without a tuner, and so it's a very mm -hmm. popular antenna. Yeah. Um, tied. For second and third place, uh, the performer antenna. So that one is really that's you know Greg's performer is really the up and comer. Uh, people really love that, really love that antenna. And then the the, the quarter wave vertical, the ground mounted vertical. Um, just no just standard whip, um, mm -hmm. or like a 17, 17 foot whip, or seventeen like foot whip quarter with the um, with the sporty forty coil. Sporty forty Wolf River Silver Bullet. Mm -hmm. Magic carpet, Faraday cloth, gra gra or ground radials. So, you know, I didn't differentiate between those, but yeah, that's your between that. But the, those were, you know, even evenly evenly tied, um, neck and neck. The performer in the quarter wave vertical, and then third place with six comments was the ham stick. So people really people really like that convenience of the of the ham stick antenna. Right, and if you just gonna, if you just have a magnet on your tower, mm -hmm. that that's just super easy for just doing the in and out photo activation, especially oh, yeah. like in, in like um, parks where there's like a lot of traffic and you don't want to set up a full antenna. Yeah, Hamstick works great on a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, a lot of times that's my winter antenna because it just sets up so fast, and I bet and you, you there's know, a lot of. Yeah. And I bet you there's a lot of people in the southern part of the U.S. where that becomes the summer antenna <laughs> because <laughs> you, don't well, wanna, you, want, you don't want to leave the air conditioning. <laughs> I've noticed we can't. So I primarily like operate out of the truck, um, but I can't have the truck running. I get too much noise. Mm -hmm. 
um, at least with the G90, and we talked about the G90 and some of the, the issues with uh, filtering it has. Um, you know, it's not a lot of noise, but it's like it's like an S2, S3 noise. Yeah. And especially when you're out in a park, you know, that that really steps out a lot of those weak signals. Yep. But just yep. my opinion. It does. Yeah. And it, the, the 891 has got a really good noise blanker, but too, you know, running the noise blanker can cut your sensitivity a little bit. So, um, especially when it's actively blanking the noise. Um, and then number five, the Ribikov. Um, mm -hmm. so people, people like, like the Ribikov. It's a great, it's a great antenna for the upper bands and the upper bands have been hot, uh, for the last couple of years. It's a yeah. 25 foot vertical whip with the four to one transformer at its base and a few ground radials. But, um, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I, I'm going to say I'm, I, I'm trying to rip off a couple of times. I'm not a hundred percent sold on it yet. I got to get a good outing with it. I think you got to get on. Sometimes yeah. I've tried out. I, I've kind of, I've, um, winter field day. I tried to rip off and, um, I think we just had some problems that they band wise. Mm -hmm. And then, um, at field day, I tried it again. And I think just, it's not, I think we were saturated in the field day. Yeah. Not not saturated like we were too drunk. I mean, later tonight we kind of did that. There was but, there um, was that. The, the bands were saturated with uh, so many things on there that it really didn't cut through as well as you'd like. Mm -hmm. it to. Yeah, it. I think I think that antenna works best if you're really going to want to focus on the upper bands, fifteen and ten meters, and especially fifteen and ten meters DX. Yeah. And, uh, and that might not, you know, that may not have been the best choice. A DX antenna may not be the best choice for field day where you want to kind of focus on within North America itself. But, um, yeah. yeah. And the other thing, oh. my, my other field day problem is I, I did primarily CW and I'm a very mm -hmm. wealthy CW operator. So, um, uh, my numbers, when you, you ever watch that video are not to be taken, you know, <laughs> <at> <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah. I, I suck, but not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then some of the other antennas mentioned were the, um, that got, these next three got four votes each, the Dipole, the NFED Random Wire, and Yesu's ATAS 120. Uh, yeah, the 120, huh? Okay, yeah. I'd put that in the same boat as the Hamstick, you know, performance-wise. Yeah. I had I had a one hundred, uh, basically the same thing, and yeah, yeah, we'll just go with that. Yeah, and then some of the other ones that just got a you know maybe one or two votes was um, Chameleon's Tactical Delta Loop. Um, somebody likes to take doublets out, oh. like a forty meter and an eighty meter doublet like, where antenna. Do you, where do you get the real estate to do that? <laughs> He preferenced, he, he, he preferenced it by saying, well, I'm going to go out for an entire weekend. So, <laughs> you know. Okay. I'll put up a, okay. Well, you're I'll spending an hour getting it in the air. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, Greg's uh, Challenger antenna, uh, which is an off-center fed vertical. Um, the Chameleon M-Pass system had a, one or two people use that. And um, one person said the DX Commander. So oh. set that one up. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, that's so really good. Yeah. Um, oh, three people said the, uh, I missed this one, the JPC 12, which is kind of, which is like the Japanese version of the Wolf River coil. Uh, a few people <laughs> like to use that one too. So <laughs> flat wants to know where the Roof River coil comes in. That would be, I, I class that one with the quarter wave vertical the ground mounted quarter wave vertical because that's yeah. typically where you you see that see it deployed uh, most often most often at so uh really interesting i i guess what i found interesting was is that um my choices were were, uh, were really quite similar to viewer choices you know the community and um mm -hmm. but just the order was sort of switched up a little bit um which yeah. was really really interesting so yeah i, I think what, what i see 
over and over again, both of you know from our activations, uh, watching other people's, and like on social media, is that it's the same three or four antennas basically, because mm-hmm. because antennas can be simple or they can be really complex. And I think for the most part, everyone likes simple when they got to go where they're going to do a park, right? Yep. You don't yep. want to spend three hours setting up. No. I'd rather I'd rather be on the air than spending all that time kind of fiddling and futzing to get an antenna on the air. That's why, you know, I, I like the NFED half waves, but um, it's not my first. It's seldom my first choice, be, just because of that reason. You know, then I gotta yeah. I gotta get out the rope bag. I gotta throw the line. I gotta recover all that stuff when I'm done. And um, right, if you're gonna set for a weekend, then yeah, sure, that's great. Especially oh, yeah. like you always like to do the low bands late at night and mm-hmm. that's what you need. That's what you need a uh, NFED half wave for. But yep. um, yeah. Uh, for just like an afternoon in the park. I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Me neither. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety and GMRS made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.